Hello, hello, hello. When I recorded this problem, I was wearing one of my Japanese yukatas. <laughs> and now I decided to wear another one of my Japanese yukatas. I like them. They're very comfortable, particularly after you take a shower. It's great. So, the amusement park. Rotating tables. Cylindrical, not tables, rooms. Rotating cylindrical rooms. And you stand on the floor. They rotate faster and faster and faster. And then they can lower the floor. And you don't fall down. You get stuck on the wall. What were the questions? The first question is, given the fact that the frequency is 0.65 Hz, radius 3 meters, mass 70 kilograms, which by the way, <laughs> you will see the mass doesn't matter, any mass will have the same. And this G, this person will stand on this floor and at that particular frequency they lower the floor and the question now is what is the minimum value of the friction coefficients between the person's back and the wall so that the person doesn't slide down. Clearly, the force down on the person is mg and the force upwards, that's the friction between the person and the wall, is the frictional force. And these two must be exactly the same because there's no acceleration in the vertical direction. So keep in mind that that's essential that this frictional force must be exactly mg. The frictional force must be exactly mg. There's a normal force from the wall on the person due to the centripetal acceleration and that normal force is the mass times the centripetal acceleration. So it's m omega square r and omega is 2 pi f. This is that f, so you can calculate omega. What is the maximum friction possible in this case? Well, the maximum friction is mu times n. And we know n, so mu times n can be as large as this that's the maximum value possible if the frictional force maximum is larger than mg then there is no problem then the friction upwards can be simply friction and is lower than the maximum one if the maximum friction upwards is lower than mg, uh, the person will slide down. And so the borderline is when the frictional force happens to be exactly a maximum. There is sort of the knife edge of the problem. And so that means that the frictional force maximum is now exactly mg. The m cancels and you find that mu in that case is g divided by omega square r. And you put in the numbers, you find then that mu is 2.00 and mu has no dimensions. Mu is a dimensionless number. So as long as mu is larger than 2.00, there is no problem. Then the friction will always exactly be mg. Second question. What is the acceleration on the person? So the person goes around like this and there is a ac centripetal acceleration always pointing towards the axis of rotation. And that acceleration is omega square r. If you've forgotten about this, you've got to do your homework. It's also v squared divided by r, it's the same thing. v is the linear speed. So it's v squared divided by r, or it's omega squared r, because v is omega r. And so, omega squared r is 15.0 meters per second squared. And when I saw that, 
I wish I had chosen capital R a little smaller, but I didn't. So this is five times G, five times the acceleration due to gravity, and that is for many people already yeah, past the dangerous level. Four meters per second, four G we can all handle, according to the website. 5G, not everyone can handle 7 or 8 or 9G, this little g, everyone faints. And that has to do with the fact that your blood is then pushed in one direction and your brains are no longer functioning and you faint. So yeah, it is marginally dangerous. So it's unrealistic, of course. In, in fact, the radii of these rooms are never 3 meters. But okay, I hope you forgive me for having chosen this very large radius. So now comes the last question. If we start rotating faster, would, could the, the friction the coefficient be lower or does the friction coefficient have to be higher for the person not to slide down? Well, if you look here, this is the required equilibrium for maximum friction. And so if omega is larger, for this to be equal to g, mu can be lower. So the larger the rotational frequency is, the lower mu can be. Now, if they slow down, because clearly there comes an end to the music, if they slow down, of course, omega goes down. And that would mean that mu would have to go up, and mu is not going to go up. In this case, mu is 2.00. So therefore, what has to be done, the floor first has to be brought up again to your feet, then they can slow down, and then, of course, mg will be larger than the frictional force, and ultimately the frictional force will be zero when the object, when the rotation stops. And then you're okay, <laughs> you can walk out again. If any one of you have ever been in one of those rotating, it's, I did it once. It, <laughs> I didn't like it, but it's by no means dangerous. It can be dangerous, but I don't think that this has ever been a problem at amusement parks. So appreciate the fact they spin you up and then the floor goes down and you're okay. When they slow you down again, they first have to bring the floor up before they can come to a halt and you can step out. All right then, have a nice day, take care, maybe you learned some physics, maybe you didn't. If you didn't, still try to be friends with me. NASA's centrifuge in which they train astronauts and also study how humans react to high accelerations, that centrifuge standard <laughs> for training 20 times G. So our problem was only five times G. It is marginally dangerous. And if you read the web 7890, most people faint. But astronauts are being trained, at least in the 60s, up to 20 G. 20 times the acceleration of gravity. So, before you become an astronaut, give it some serious thought. <laughs>